so much for staying with us here on Court TV Live. I'm Julie Grant. The man accused of kidnapping and murdering a local Memphis teacher and mother appeared in court for the third day in a row. Cleotha Henderson is facing charges of aggravated kidnapping, tampering with evidence, and first-degree murder. After police say he abducted 34-year-old Eliza Fletcher while she was out jogging early on Friday. Court TV legal correspondent Chainley Painter is there in Memphis gathering the latest for us. She is joining us now live. Uh, Chainley, good afternoon to you. Uh, first of all, tell us where you are uh, right now, please. Great to be with you, Julie. If you notice behind me, I'm at the location where Eliza Fletcher's body was found, but it looks a lot different today. The tall grass, the grass that was taller than I am, has been mowed today, this morning, by the city. You can see, of course, the house behind me, the balloons, the flowers, the memorial still growing, and to the back steps that you can now see because there's no longer the grass fence, on the other side of those steps, would be where authorities found the body of 34 year old Eliza Fletcher after more than three days of searching. Now the woman responsible for the reason this grass is now cut, Josephine McGee, come, come on over here, Miss Josephine. Okay. You're with a nonprofit Queen uh, community, community organization, organization program. Yes, and you called the city to come take care of this grass. Tell us why and about your event tomorrow. Because I'm having an event for Miss Fletcher, um, we're doing a candlelight vigil at six o'clock p.m. and I want people to come and I want it to be clean out here. And you were telling me earlier about why her story resonated so much with you yes, and the work you do in your nonprofit organization yes, and also the community that you live in. Why? Because um, I had a sister, my baby sister. She was 16 back in 1983. She got killed, you know, they raped and strangled her to death. Oh my goodness. Mm -hmm. Sorry to hear that, but I have to tell you, Julie, Miss Josephine has been out here. She has the ra the broom and rake morning. in her hand right now. <laughs> and this seven. morning, it's since about seven, seven, and she's had her own lawnmower here yes. helping clean up this area. And this is a common problem. We talked about this with the people who stop by and visit this type of neighborhood with yes. vacant homes and grass overgrown. Right. That's right. And what do you want in this? You want the city to take action. I want the city because we paying uh, taxes here, and then the city code. The city code enforcement and city councilor, they need to do their job. You know, we they don't want to live with all this grass around them. Right. They want to live in a, in a decent, clean neighborhood. And then grass brings snakes, bring rats, bring bugs, it brings and spiders. And it conceals crimes. Uh -huh. right? Yes. So thank you for what you're doing. And again, and for your vigil tomorrow night here at this location, Julie, there's expected to be many people to have this candlelight visual yes. for Eliza Fletcher. Thank you so much. You and I'm going to toss it back to you, Julie. Oh, much She watches Court TV, to... by the way. Big fan. Oh, <laughs> that's awesome, Chanley. Uh, what a sweet lady Miss Josephine is. And uh, our hearts break for her hearing what she told you about her loss. Um, in, in the same kind of, of criminal situation with her baby sister. And uh, who knows, maybe at some point uh, in, the, in the not too, so far future, she can meet with Eliza Fletcher's husband and children, and uh, maybe they can all, all talk. Um, my goodness, uh, so much going on there where you are. So this home, as you pointed out, looks a lot different today. I know that you've been heading in different places in that community. You also were at an apartment complex as well uh, today. Tell us about that, please. Yeah, yes, Julie. Uh, the affidavit against the defendant here, Cleotha Henderson, details that in the hours after the abduction, he is seen by witnesses and video in that black SUV, cleaning it out hours after at his brother's apartment. Well, just this direction to my right, about half a mile, literally just down the road, we drove it. It only takes about a minute and a half to make it from that apartment complex to this spot right here where Eliza Fletcher's body was found. Uh, and so quickly, he, according to the affidavit, is seen by a couple of witnesses uh, cleaning for two hours 
uh, the passenger side through the passenger side of that black SUV. So the affidavit says that, of course, a witness told police that he was behaving oddly and his brother told the police that he saw his brother cleaning the defendant here, cleaning the car, washing his clothes in the sink of the house as well. And his brother appeared to be acting very strange Friday morning. So there is a surveillance video from that apartment complex that was obtained by local news station WREG. They claim uh, that Abstin is the one seen uh, arriving to that Longview Garden Apartments around 8 a.m., 7.57 a.m. Friday in the footage. He sits in the car for a, while, for a while and then he goes inside his brother's apartment and then he leaves the apartment and spends an hour, almost an hour, a couple of hours in that passenger side uh, allegedly cleaning out the back of that SUV. Julie. Oh, wow, Chanley. Yeah, we're looking at that video you're referencing right now. Uh, really, really disturbing allegations here. Uh, that allegation, of course, being the cover-up of, of what uh, was allegedly uh, committed by him. I know this was day number three for him in court. The way everything worked out with the discovery of the body meant uh, multiple days. And then there was an issue you told us about yesterday with the motion under seal by counsel. Uh, tell us what you were able to find out, please, when he was back in front of the judge today. Some more legal wrangling this morning. The defendant, of course, entered. He didn't say anything in court. The family of Eliza Fletcher also inside the courtroom. Again, her brother, uncle, and other members of the family. Uh, like I told you yesterday, the prosecutor said to her husband and mother, of course, too grieved uh, to attend anything just yet. So inside the courtroom, the judge took up that matter under seal and put on the record that he didn't find any sort of conflict of interest from the public defender's office. He did state that they, the office did represent present the defendant 20 years ago for the kidnapping of the attorney when the defendant was 16 years old. But it was a different attorney, an attorney in that office who's not a part of this new matter. And so the judge did not find any sort of conflict. The public defender's office will continue to represent uh, Mr. Henderson. They also set a court date of uh, September the 15th for a report. So according to the prosecutors after this hearing, there was a quick press conference said that you know, this is just a normal part of the process. Uh, there's still a couple of months more of hearings before this even moves up to the circuit uh, criminal court. Uh, we could even see a preliminary hearing, they told the media, as well as it would go to the grand jury. So still a lot to come ahead for this defendant. Most certainly, Chanley. Uh, and I know uh, throughout the reporting, um, we've seen you do here on Court TV, the family is in so much pain uh, right now. Uh, the other day, uh, you had the interview with the district attorney saying they're in such agony uh, after this. Uh, it's hard to imagine what they're going through. Uh, any word uh, today on how they're doing? Right. Of course, uh, we asked the attorneys again how the family is doing because they've uh, told me that they are in constant communication with the family of Eliza Fletcher, keeping them informed, even visiting their home uh, multiple times to uh, to keep in touch. And the elected uh, prosecutor, Steve Mulroy, did tell the media about the latest. Let's listen. What can you say about the mindset of the family, how they're doing right now? You know, obviously they're distraught. Um, you're talking about the Fletcher family, right? Um, you know, obviously they're distraught. Um, they've come together quite well. They're mutually supportive. Um, they're obviously interested in finding out every development in the case, um, but they've been, uh, they've actually been, you know, I think uh, quite commendably um, concerned about, you know, each other and making sure that they support each other. Um, they've been fully cooperative with us without the, throughout the entire process. And of course the family not talking at all and a lot of the friends of the family who we've been meeting here, Julie, at this memorial where the body was found and about 20 minutes north at the campus, University of Memphis campus, where she was abducted. That's a growing memorial. I've been speaking to people who knew the family. They, out of the respect of the family who are not speaking yet, are also trying to not speak to the media. So they're kind of coming together in solidarity in that way. Those who knew uh, Eliza Fletcher uh, the best in today in court, they of course, would not speak to any of the media, and they were guarded as they entered and exited the courtroom and even the courthouse. So there is a run. I want to mention 4 a.m. I know uh, 
Miss Josephine mentioned her vigil tomorrow night at 6 p.m. There's also, Julie, a 4 a.m. run at the University of Campus down that same spot where uh, Eliza Fletcher did not finish her morning run on Friday. Oh, my goodness, Chanley. Uh, it, it's, it's touching to see so many people uh, reaching out with this showing of support and uh, comfort and, and love for the Fletcher family after their loss. Uh, Chanley Painter, live for us in Memphis, Tennessee. Thank you so much for all of that. I want to bring in my guests now here in the studio with me, attorneys Judge Kimberly Bando and Josh Schiffer uh, with me following this story. You both... Uh, had been following the developments, you know, throughout the weekend. Of course, the news, the discovery of her body. Now here we are, day three, this guy back in court. Um, it's like a nightmare. It's like a nightmare when you think about, you know, a, a crime that's like a stranger kind of crime that somebody's just on a run and, you know, thinking they're doing something healthy and then suddenly uh, this. Um, judge, how do you see this case playing out like like the long game like do you think we're gonna see a trial on this one or do you think uh, this guy might plead if you had to predict what would you say and why please i think we're going to see a trial unfortunately um because i would hope if he is guilty that he wouldn't drag the family and the community obviously who's mourning through this but i can't see them offering anything but life without the possibility of parole. So then in that case, it's really not any option for him but to have a trial. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that he will definitely have a trial. Mm -hmm. I, I what do you think, Josh? Yeah, I think there's some game strategy, just like Judge Bando's saying, about, it, it, in my brief review, it looks like he's very guilty. That's what really everything's showing, mm -hmm. and he has a terrible record. Everything is there for a successful death penalty prosecution, despite the more progressive leanings of the local DA. Um, that's going to create some really tough questions for anybody advising the young man. And remember, we don't know what this young man's mental state is, other than since the age of 16, he spent 20 years in prison. That does for kidnapping. Yeah, for yeah, kidnapping. Yeah, yeah. Let's that's make that clear, right? Little kid of prison. Lawyer. Uh, of, of a lawyer. Of a lawyer. Of a lawyer. Of a yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. Th this young person. We talk a lot about brain development. Certainly, he was wrapped up in stuff at a very early age. Who knows where he is? Who knows about his ability to really assist his lawyers and what his competency is? But this is a case that's probably going to demand the death penalty, and that means a trial. Mm -hmm. uh, may not be economically efficient. I also just want to add, God bless right. Miss Josephine and oh, for, I for know. calling How cute attention. Was she? People talk uh, about these community issues with the tall grass. If you have a bunch of abandoned houses with tall grass, you're inviting yeah, crime, crime and other problems. And I cannot tell people how important it is. Reach out to your local leaders. Yeah. Code enforcement, like she was saying, Cut they've the got a job. Hold our leaders accountable because that's how we keep our communities safe yes. for people like Ms. Josephine. Yes.